Good morning. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to our worship service. I feel kind of tall. Um, there will be a congregational meeting on May 22nd after the worship service to elect the officers. Um, we'll be electing a president, vice president, secretary, and deacon of Christian education. And the members that are running for office are President Tina Gilman, Vice President Dave Shears, Secretary Bethany Bennett, and Christian Education Kim Zarcy. And the pretty daisies in the window are for all the ladies in our congregation, so please take one as you leave today. And there are donation envelopes for the daisies if you would like to donate, and the donations will be part of our fundraising for the Ukrainian people through Lutheran World Relief. So we want to wish all the ladies happy Mother's Day. And again, please don't forget to take a daisy with you as you leave. And as a reminder, um, there will be no children's Sunday school next week because I'll be on vacation. And Becca is teaching on the 22nd. So bring the kiddos then. Now we prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are the treasured people of the Lord. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. One does not live by bread alone. The Lord be with you. Let us join together in the prayer of the day printed on our insert. O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will, and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek... <laughs> she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Please read responsively the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in, in want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they, felt th they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. 
They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the readings. The Gospel according to St. John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works I do, I do in my Father's name, testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will not perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel according to our Lord. Andrea can stand up today. Everybody have a seat up here. Okay, well good morning. And since it's Mother's Day, we are going to play a special little game. And I'm going to need some audience participation. Would you young gentlemen like to come up too? No? You going to stay there? Okay. Well what I need you to do is turn around and don't look out here. And I am going to ask some people in the congregation to say something. And if you recognize it as your mother or your Mimi or your grandma's voice, raise your hand. But if it's someone you don't know, don't raise your hand, okay? Okay. And audience, I'm, if I walk up to you and hand you the microphone, please just read something or say something. So let's see. Who are we going to start with? Um. Put your coat on. We have a taker there. Um, let's see. Who else can we do? Um, wanna read that one? Don't hit your sister or brother. Hmm. Somebody recognized that one. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um. Take a nap. That was kind of <laughs> iffy, but we got that one. Okay. Um. Brush your teeth. <laughs> There's a lot of good mom advice there. I think we're playing some tricks, though. Eat your vegetables. Nobody rose their hand on that one? Huh. I'm trying to make sure everybody covered here. I love you. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a fun little game, and you guys did awesome. So turn around now, and we'll have a little talk. It sounded like a lot of you recognized your mother's or your grandmother's voices, didn't you? Did you hear any voices you didn't recognize? No. You didn't? You knew everybody? Well, well uh, you knew that. Okay. Well, we did try to trick you, and there were some 
ladies that said something that really weren't related to you, but they all love and care about you. But Jesus was trying to tell us something in the Bible story today that his sheep would know his voice. And so when God talks to us through Jesus, we'll recognize that voice just like we recognized our mothers or our grandmothers. And Jesus and God would never try to trick us like Miss Andrea did with you today. So you will recognize when God is speaking to us because Jesus tells us that my sheep know my voice. And Jesus would never try to steer us wrong or have us do anything that would harm or hurt us or trick us. Okay? So, all right, let's be done now. Thank you. unto my feet and a light unto my path. May the words I share today be truthful and spoken with humility and reverence. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, I'd like to thank Dick for my step stool here. Pastor complains you can't see me otherwise, but thank you. This is Good Shepherd Sunday, and as we all know, it's also Mother's Day two very special occasions to celebrate. I think we all like the picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, the one where he's holding the cute little lamb. Yet as any picture, there's more to the story. Christ as the Good Shepherd who leads his faithful to the springs of the water of life. Christ the lamb who vanquishes sin and suffering, who promises to wipe away every tear. One of my theology professor spoke on shepherding, and I found it very intriguing. Jesus often uses descriptions of shepherding and shepherd analogies because this is what was familiar to the people of his time. They could relate to this reference, and it helped explain his lessons. Sheep are gentle, independent creatures, not highly intelligent and not brave. They're defenseless, and they would really perish without a good shepherd. Yet shepherds of Jesus' time were considered dirty, low-class citizens. They spent their time in the flocks, with their flocks out in the fields, rarely went to temple, often neglecting their duties in the Hebrew traditions. People did not think very highly of, of, 
shepherds, and shepherds often didn't think very much of themselves. They, they didn't really care. Some of them would abandon their flocks if it got too dangerous. So not all shepherds could be considered good shepherds. In Jesus' time, there were certain routines and practices that shepherds would follow. These were called seasons of shepherding. Now, shepherds needed to move their flock quite often. And this time of year was called the plentiful season, the spring and summer where they could go into the open fields and graze till their heart's content. A good shepherd's focus was on protecting them from wild animals. St. John quoted Jesus, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now, the autumn season was called the shouldering season. At this time, food was not as plentiful. And farmers would invite shepherds to bring their flocks into their fields, to clear out their fields, and to provide some good natural fertilizer as they filled their bellies. This was also a time when the flocks would congregate together. For during this time, it wasn't the wild animals that was the threat. It was humans stealing the sheep. When night came, the, she the sheep would be in large pens, and the shepherds would take turns guide excuse me, guarding the entrances. St. John quoted, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, will come in and go out and find pasture. Now learning about the shouldering season, I also came across a remarkably interesting reading. It was an ex- explanation that stated that Jesus was probably born in Bethlehem during the autumn season rather than the winter season. This was because in Luke chapter 2, the Bible describes the scene, and there were shepherds living out in the field at night, keeping watch over their flock, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Now, the winter season, sheep were housed in barns, and shepherds needed to provide everything, shelter, food, and water. I thought of shepherding the other night as I was explaining to my first graders in my mini 4-H group that their cats would probably drink more water if they gave them a pet water fountain. Because in the wild, cats will only drink water that is moving. Because still water would hold bacteria that would make them sick. Now sheep are very different. Sheep will not drink from, from moving water. They're actually afraid of this. It must be still water. And in the countryside, it is the shepherds who have to still the water. A good shepherd would lay down in a creek and dam it up so that the sheep could drink their water. In the Hebrew Bible, David's 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. A good shepherd is strong to live out in the elements with, without comfort or safety. A good shepherd is brave to, to risk his life for those in his care. A good shepherd is tender and loving and vigilant, always watching over their sheep, caring and knowing them very well. As mentioned, sheep are not the smartest amongst God's creatures. Sometimes we're not so smart either. We don't always make good choices. We don't always speak and act before thinking. We don't always love others as Jesus commanded us. Yet Jesus protects us, guides us, and cares for us. Sheep are extremely skitterish and fearful animals. And we are fearful at times, afraid of the unknown, new things, different things. Yet Jesus walks with us, calms us, comforts us, I truly love the analogy of Jesus as a good shepherd. Jesus laid down his life for us, protects us, guides us, provides us. Jesus is our good shepherd. As Jesus is truly our good heavenly shepherd, God is our heavenly father, loving us unconditionally and providing for our needs. He also gives us our earthly good shepherds, our earthly fathers and mothers. And today, we celebrate our mothers. With our baptism, God chooses us to be in his family. 
Our Heavenly Father loves us unconditionally, and our mothers love us absolutely. Pastor Cal, in one of his sermons, used the word adoption when referring to God choosing us. Now, I never heard this reference before, but it is a glorious reference. For being adopted is a truly blessed choosing. It's an incredible person that can choose and love a child that is not of their blood. A child, this child is truly and completely only of the heart, chosen purely out of love. Circumstances surrounding ch a child available for adoption are sometimes sad, harmful, even horrible at times. Yet these parents choose them and they don't care. They choose the child, they protect, they guide, and their child, despite any circumstances, they love their child entirely, sincerely, remarkably. Now, Good Shepherd and Mother's Day are very special, and even more so as we celebrate them together. Now, I am very, abund very, very blessed. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and I am a daughter. Yet more blessed, I am an adopted daughter. My parents chose me, and they have always told me and shown me how special I am that I was adopted and how much I am loved. Being adopted is a wonderful blessing, and I thank God for the woman who gave birth to me, that he showed her a unique way to love me and a wonderful way to shepherd over me. Whether you are a child of adoption or natural child of your mother, your love is a gift to them. As, as their love is a gift to you. When I found out I was to be a mother, I couldn't imagine my heart ever being able to hold all the love I had for my children. Then when I was to become a grandmother, I marveled at, as to how much more I could actually love. And to think, this is nothing compared to how much God loves us. I am very grateful and very blessed to have Jesus as my heavenly good shepherd and mommy as my earthly good shepherd. I think good shepherds are very special to God. They provide guidance, food, shelter to the most vulnerable creatures. Shepherds bring safety, assurance, calm, peace to his gentle creatures. Shepherds of their own free will give up comfort and security, risk their lives for their sheep. God saw shepherds as honest messengers, chose them to receive the angel's announcement at the birth of his only beloved son, Jesus Christ. Even as Jesus suffered on the cross, he was concerned for his mother. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples whom he also loved nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple John, here is your mother. Now, unfortunately, as there are some not-so-good shepherds in, this, in the world, there are some not-so-good parents. Yet, if you are blessed with a good shepherd, a wonderful parent, be grateful with your whole heart and praise God. With gratitude, remember your lo the, and love your good shepherds. Rejoice in our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Good Shepherd, and our earthly good shepherds. And to all of you very special mothers, I wish you a very special, happy, and blessed Mother's Day. Amen.
Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, our only Son, our only Son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge himself. We believe in the Holy Christian, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. <clears throat> Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us in your compassion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone. <clears throat> so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle Shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Today we especially pray for Connie Kaniga, Willow Dean Herrick, Kathy Lozier, Richie Howard, Ralph Gross, the grandson of a member, and Tom Hass. Set people in their path who can provide care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, <coughs> enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation from all tribes and people and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.